General Votel, sir, thank you so much for this conversation with the Combating Terrorism Center. Good. It's great to be here. Thank you. So there's much debate, ongoing debate and discussion about defining who the enemy is. And I wondered if you could give us your perspective from your command of who is the enemy that we are facing today. Yeah, thanks. Uh, great question. So I think what we're, what we're really dealing with is a, is a variety of violent extremists, uh, many of whom use uh, ideologies, sometimes religious-based ideologies, uh, to uh, gain, move towards their ends. Uh, but more specifically, the, the enemy that we're, that we're focused on today, I think, is an increasingly sophisticated one, uh, one who is able to combine traditional tactics of terrorists, bombings, kidnappings, hostage-taking, uh, with, uh, with the, the savvy that comes along with the current complex world we're in. So they're able to leverage the Internet, they're able to leverage social media uh, to get their, get their message out uh, and are able to use that to bring others uh, with them. Uh, and then uh, they're backed up by a very, very powerful ideology that is appealing to a lot of people. And so they're able to draw a lot of young people and others uh, into, their, into their cause. And, and I think that's uh, the principal enemy that we're dealing with today. The fight, as you alluded to, that we're facing today is, is very asymmetrical, and the enemy is nebulous in many ways. As such, the tactic, strategy, these things are not going to resemble what they were in previous wars. Can you speak a little bit about how our approach then um, to countering terrorism has evolved in the last even couple of years? Well, sure. Yeah, we've we've we have to be as savvy and as uh, proficient as the terrorists are, uh, and so what it requires us to do is to is to be uh, is to is to think ahead, is to be preventive, is to anticipate the types of things that uh, that they're going to do. Uh, the terrorist organizations that we face today will take advantage of things that we find in our normal life, use of the internet, use of social media, and they will be able to turn those things against us. So it is incredible incredibly important that we are looking in those domains uh, for opportunities to understand what they're doing, how they're getting their message out, and then identifying opportunities for us to disrupt and delay or, or just stop those activities from, from going on. Sir, your command takes on much of this fight. Is that advisable? Is it sustainable? Or should we be looking at a different way of approaching this? Well, certainly the Special Operations Command plays a huge role in, in, in this fight right here. But I, w I would be remiss to tell you that we are the only ones dealing with it. It, is, it takes everybody here. It's conventional forces, our interagency partners. Uh, it certainly is members of the intelligence community. And importantly, it's members of the international community. So we, we have some very unique capabilities that allow us to do a variety of things from uh, you know from getting out and working with our partners to doing more unilateral uh, type activities uh, uh, in, a, in a more direct fashion so we have a lot of unique capabilities but really it's about bringing together all of the capabilities all of the authorities uh, so that we really have a, a kind of a full team approach to to this particular threat to that point, sir, the question of law enforcement's involvement, can you speak a little bit about what advantages that they bring to the table that maybe the military per se does not? Yeah, uh, that's a great point. In many countries, in many uh, countries around the world, the principal uh, arm of the government that deals with counterterrorism is, in fact, their law enforcement. So in many regards, the military, special operations being a subset of that, are really in a, in a supporting role. And so we can help them, we can enable them, but ultimately the end state is going to be a achieved by law enforcement. So law enforcement plays a huge role, certainly in the homeland here in the United States, as it does in many, many countries, where they are the, they are the designated lead for counterterrorism. Sir, I'd like to ask you about the metrics that we use to gauge our success. Are those appropriate, or are we measuring the right things, in other words? Uh, I think that's a that's a really good question as well, I, and I and I wonder if we if we actually are. Um, you know, we have a tendency to focus on the number of foreign fighters uh, that are flowing and the number of uh, that we're able to disrupt or uh, specific uh, attacks we're able to stop along the way. I'm not sure in the long run those are are particularly helpful. I think what we need to come to grips with is 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 looking at our metrics more in terms of what the popula the human dimension is telling us out there. Um, in many ways, this is a, this is a fight for, uh, 
for populations out there, for trying to understand what their influence is, for understanding how they uh, perceive the situation. So I think a better metric for us to be looking at is trying to look at ways that we can gauge what the populations, particularly the populations in vulnerable countries and vulnerable locations are saying about the threat and about the government and uh, about the situation that they feel. I think that would be the most, the truest uh, way to to measure how we're doing uh, against against these particular threats. By the very nature of your work and, and the work of your command, you, you cannot always have a very strong public presence. I wondered if you could talk a, a bit about balancing that need to be transparent, but also mm -hmm. to have not secrecy, but the uh, the cover for for what you do uh, is that does that make your work any more difficult? It does to some extent. So you know, I would just say that the you know the special operations command obviously supports transparency. The American people, citizens, should should understand what their military is doing. And so we do have a public face. We have a you know a, a web page out there so people can see understand what the command is doing. That said, there are certain aspects of the things that we do that rely on secrecy, that rely on the element of surprise, that rely on keeping a keeping a low profile so that we can we can not only protect our people, but we can really enhance their effectiveness in doing the things they're doing. So it really is a balance, I think. And, um, you know, we attempt to achieve that by our by the things that we do put out in public. We achieve it through our communication to the oversight committees that pay attention to us in Congress who represent the people. Uh, and so they understand what we're doing and, and understand the things that, that we're doing. So there, there's a variety of, of different things that we can do. But it, for, for us, it really is a balance between, you know, making sure that the public understands what their military is doing and we are preserving, um, we are preserving the security for our, for our people to do the jobs that the nation has asked them to do. In addition to defining the enemy, one of the debates that is going on is knowing the enemy and how, how we do that effectively. In your estimation and in, in your observation, are, are we doing a good job of that? I think we're we're beginning to. I, I think it's I think this is a this is a very complex uh, challenge for us. And many times the enemy is uh, is ambiguous. He hides behind uh, the protection of the internet. Uh, he operates in the shadows. Um, there, he has support networks. Uh, he has places where he goes to do his, uh, where his his activity. So it, it, they are a network, uh, and portions of that network are exposed to us, and we can identify it, and we can go after it uh, much much easier than other portions of it. So I, I think I think it is it is a it is a difficult challenge. You know, we they they operate in a network. We would like to operate in a network and portions of that we don't want to expose to them, and I think they operate the same way. Sir, if you'll allow me uh, one last question. What role do research institutions like the Combating Terrorism Center and, and other universities across the country play in helping in this fight? Yeah, they're absolutely essential. So the Combating Terrorism Center here at West Point is a key part of this. They really sit at the intersection of theory and practice. Uh, and what they do through their research, through their activities, is they help provide information to practitioners like myself, to other uh, uh, members of the, of the academia community, uh, and to others, policymakers out there, so we can understand what is happening. Uh, the ability to sit back and, and, and uh, analyze information, put it into perspective uh, for, uh, for practice, I think is very, very important. This is, a, this is a hugely complex problem, one we've been dealing with for a long time, even longer than the last 14 years since 9-11. Uh, terrorism is, has been around. Uh, and it's not going away anytime soon. So the more we can do to understand what's causing it, uh, where we can make the best use of our you know, limited resources and concentrate those in the right areas, I think is important. And I think the research uh, organizations and, and, uh, and entities like the Combating Terrorism Center and many, many others that are out there are absolutely essential to, to understanding this problem and helping us move forward effectively. General Votel, it's been a privilege and an honor. Thank you so much Thanks for so doing much. this. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you.